You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another gorgeous episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Pablo. And my name is Rob. It is gorgeous. It's actually a gorgeous day in Albuquerque. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we're having a good time. This is episode number 644. Thank you for being with us. Really appreciate it. I wanted to take a screenshot this morning of the Weather Channel because it was like Phoenix 104, <laughs> Albuquerque 86. And uh. I'm like, the difference between us <laughs> in a nutshell. Oh. And I love Phoenix. I really do like the city, but man, that, that weather. Yeah. Sometimes it hurts. Uh, Especially when we're dealing, we're like in this pre-fall New Mexico weather. Mm. Mm, it's tough to beat. Yeah, Line and Kugel stopped selling summer shandy and I was like, it's too early. It's too early. <laughs> it's still August for yeah. another week plus. What are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Anyway, I'm a big summer shandy fan. What can I say? Well, guys, welcome to another show. Today, we're going to be talking about battery maintenance and how to prolong the life of your batteries. And if you're mm. watching this show on YouTube, you may see a big battery case from GPC here on the show, and you're going to learn why it is so important to have one of those. So today's podcast is brought to you by GPC. If you need a case to protect your gear and take it wherever you want to go, if you want to hike into the mountains or if you want to take it on set, GPC has the right case for you. Use coupon code DRONEU15 to save 10% on any case on their site. Check it out, GPC. All right, Robbo, play that question. Hi, Drone You. My name's Chase. I'm a hobbyist drone pilot. My question is if you guys have any tips regarding lithium LiPo batteries about storage and how to keep the battery lasting as long as possible. Thank you, guys. Your podcast has taught me many things, and I'm looking forward for the next podcast. Mm, thank you. Thank you for the question. How do we make those batteries last, Paul? Uh, there is a couple caveats. So mm. um, l let's just go battery maintenance, number one, and then we're going to go into traveling with batteries, and then we're going to go into how do you get rid of batteries. So so are you going to be talking specifically about LiPo, or is this... LiPos. Okay. LiPos. Just a lot clarify. of people, yeah, you can get in the nitty gritty and be like, well, it's a lithium ion polymer battery. That means it's a LiPo. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. When I, how, here's how I think about it. Lithium ion mm -hmm. batteries are the batteries that are in your phone. Mm -hmm. They're stable. They're, uh, they don't do, you know, uh, intense discharge and intense recharge. It's more of a, so they don't need to, they don't need to, mm -hmm. they're more for a little bit longer endurance. Right. Um, but when it comes to your drone batteries, they're actually quite volatile. Now, thanks to, uh, DJI for balancing those batteries way back on the Phantom too, because otherwise we'd be having even more problems to this day. So let's talk about battery maintenance. What can you do to prolong the life of your batteries? Well, you may notice that there is a self-discharge setting in DJI's Go app. There is also a self-discharge setting um, in a few other manufacturers' drones as well if they have balanced batteries. Now, that is a very important setting. Why is that? Well, if you're not flying your drones often, your batteries, if they sit in storage, could actually get ruined over time, especially if they're left fully charged. So if you are storing your batteries, rule number one, discharge the battery to about 30 to 60% of the battery if you are going to store it. Number two, set your self-discharge to no longer than seven or eight days, because what's going to happen is the battery will self-discharge itself and over that time. But here's what I say, you know, when we train train fire departments, when we train police officers and consult for other groups, we always tell people, you should have a Friday fly day because mm. number one, it's practice. You guys all get to go out there and fly, have a good time, but you're actually doing a good thing by practicing. It's just fun too. It sure Let's is, Rob. Um, in fact, you've been getting a lot better, by the way, since Friday Thank fly you. days. I'm digging it. Good. This flying thing's actually pretty cool. In case y'all didn't know, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> um, but also it's really important because you're cycling those batteries. That's just super important. If you're not cycling the batteries weekly, the battery is not going to last very long. It's just, it's just kind of how they're made. The other thing that you should do, or I say rule number two, is you should deep cycle your batteries every 10 to 20 flights. Now, some people are like, oh, I do it every 10 flights. 
that's great. I have found that you can do 10 up to 20. Anytime you go beyond 20, uh, you really should, really, really should deep cycle your battery. What does it mean to deep cycle your battery? Well, there's two different things that you can do. Um, if you have a certain type of charger, you can set it to auto discharge, but I don't recommend that. I recommend that you literally go out and fly and fly that battery as long as you can. When you get your battery warnings, bring the drone back to you and just let it hover about 10 to 15 feet off the ground and try to bring the battery just as low as possible. You're probably going to get down to around 3.5 volts or about 5% of the battery. This is great. It's going to auto land. And as it auto lands, just try to move the drone around. I call it kind of in the, the fishing bowl or the toilet bowl movement. Mm -hmm. Just try to you know use as much battery power as possible and then it will land itself. Now, here's the kicker leave the drone on, take the propellers off and leave the drone on. The drone will actually power itself off. And that is essentially deep cycling the battery. You'll charge the battery from there. And what that is doing is essentially taking out all the electrons out of that battery and filling it back up properly. Now, when I say balanced charging, all of your DJI chargers are already doing that. And f people don't really understand what balanced charging is. Nope. And the way that I try to explain it is whenever you go to the gas station, you go, you put the, the gas thing in, in your the nozzle, the nozzle in your gas tank, uh -huh. and you normally set it to a really high amount and it's just pumping, 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 and then it stops, right? Yep. And then sometimes you just give a little more trickle, right? Just mm -hmm. just top it off just That's a little true. bit, you Although know? Although Costco says not to top off your gas tank. Well, Costco. <laughs> Anyways, okay, anyway. carry on. Um, it's bad for the and, environment, they say. But go and, ahead. Well, anyway, so that's because if it's a hot day, you get a lot of yeah, leakage. I anyway, so. I understand. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Sorry. We're not going down that right hole. Um, <laughs> but essentially, it's like a gas can. You, you fill, 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 fill up, stop, and then you top it off just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, to make sure that the tank is completely full. Hmm. That's essentially what a balanced charge is doing. That's pretty cool. We're giving it essentially three to five amps, just boom, 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 and then we're going half amp, quarter amp, half amp, quarter amp, just to make sure it's hmm. completely full. So that is essentially what a balanced charge does, and it's imperative for any LiPo battery and the prolonged lifetime of your battery. Now, guys, if you're flying and it's hot outside, if you live in Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, uh, Louisiana, <laughs> uh, Texas, uh, or Nuevo Mexico, uh, or Arizona, or California, you know that you should not charge your batteries when they're too hot. Now, the Phantom 4 batteries, the Phantom 3 batteries will display the light closest to the button, blink, 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 and that means the battery is too hot. And a lot of people have asked hmm. me, well, can I leave the battery on the charger when it's blinking like that? And the answer is no. You've got to press the button so you take the warning away, let the battery cool 20 to 30 minutes, and do not put it in a refrigerator, do not put it near air conditioning. Uh, you will shock the battery mm. and you will kill the battery if you do that it'll take a couple weeks but it will happen trust me i've blown through enough inspire batteries to know that and they're so, not stinking cheap yeah i know they're not <laughs> and by the way guys for those of you asking have i actually used air conditioners and refrigerators to cool batteries while i'm doing live streaming and whatnot i'm guilty yes i have so, so when you do that you basically realize that you're just sacrificing the battery potentially to get the job done. And it's still not a good idea. You yeah. really have to be careful. And because I fly over water, guys, remember there is a battery check. And this is in our flight over water class. If you haven't taken that class, you've got to check it out. One of the first things that you do when you're taking off from a boat or you're taking off over water is you ram the elevation. Just completely ram it. If your voltage drops below 3.5 volts, bring the drone back immediately because it will auto land. And when it auto lands, you have no elevation control. All you mm -hmm. have is lateral control. Yeah. So you better be ready to catch that Inspire, which I've had to do on Oof. a multi-million dollar boat and everyone's like, oh my god, it's landing on its own, oh my god! And I'm like, just move, just back up, just back up, I got this. So. Yeah, you better stay calm Yeah, in that scenario, <laughs> if nothing else. Yeah, totally. Huh. So, And so storing them, um, obviously you talked about if you're going to store it very long, what to do there, but where should you store batteries? What's You should store batteries in a cool, dry place. Now, here's the other thing. So we've talked about the extreme heat and how heat can be bad for batteries and how if you have the warning light, you take the battery off the charger, let it sit for 30 or 40 minutes, and then put it back on the charger and let it do its thing. But here's the thing. Uh, you know, with, with this issue, 
Um, if you're in extreme cold, you can have the same problems. If your batteries, let's say it's the middle of winter and you go out and your batteries are too cold, you're not going to get nearly as much flight time. That's what we talk about, you know, keeping your batteries warm, putting them on the defroster. And again, mm -hmm. another good reason for a battery case from GPC because it'll help keep your batteries insulated and warm. Now, if you are flying in cold environments, I highly recommend if your batteries have been left outside, they've been left out in the cold, fire up the drone, let it warm up for about one to two minutes. Do not take off. Turn the drone off turn the drone back on and you'll notice that you'll mm. actually get at least two to three more minutes of flight time by just doing that. Now, if you are in a really cold environment, what you can do is turn the drone on, let it warm up for two minutes, turn it off, turn it back on, hover at five feet for 30 to 60 seconds, bring the drone back, turn it off and turn it back on and you'll get even more flight time. So what's interesting is that you're talking a couple minutes here, 60 seconds here, feels like an eternity when you're trying to get flying, right? But yeah, you got to be patient. You do. And what's just, more important, flying safely or yeah, or just losing the bird? Of course, right. Or just taking care of your batteries and making them last longer. Because again, as we all know, those things are not cheap. Yeah. For sure. Yep. So uh, mm. anyway, that's what you do in cold environments. And remember, try not to charge your batteries if they're too cold. You really want them at room temperature. Um, so let's talk about battery traveling. If you're flying on an airliner, let's say a Southwest flight, uh, and this is where this, this podcast will evolve off of the other ones. I hate flying any regional carrier, whether it's United, American, uh, what's the other ones? Um, trying to remember. There's all those little offshoot brands. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Like if you... WestJet. No, not WestJet. That's Canada. They're actually good about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I can't think of any. There's other. a reason I love to fly Southwest. All of their jets are 737s, which means this battery case or my Phantom case will actually fit in the overhead compartments. Now, luckily, I was recently on a few Delta flights up north. And they were freaking out because they're like, uh, there's nowhere to put your, your case, sir. I had my Phantom 4 case from GPC, but I took all my Mavic batteries out of my Mavic backpack and put them in that case, put my Osmo batteries in that case. I put everything in the Phantom case. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, sir, you're going to have to check that. And I was like, no, I'm not going to check that. And they're like, sir, according to FAA guidelines. And I was like, ma'am. And I pulled out my FAA certificate and I said, <laughs> according to the FAA, it is illegal to put lithium polymer batteries below the deck. And she's like, uh, uh, uh well, wh what are we going to do then? And she's like, I'm going to call my manager. And I'm like, here's what we're going to do. Like, I can either put it under my feet. I can stand on it, whatever. I'll sit on it. I don't care. Like <laughs> whatever needs to happen. She's like, well, it's not going to fit in the overhead compartment. And luckily, there was a really, really cool uh, flight attendant that got on the plane, and she's like, oh, yeah, you just put it here in the closet. Hmm. And literally, it was like... That seems like a pretty easy solution they should all have known about. Yeah, I agreed. Well, I got, on, I got on another Delta flight, and there was a Delta pilot riding uh, standby, and this lady had filled up the whole closet with all of her bags. And I was like, well... I have nowhere to put the drone and it can't go under. Can you move your baggage to the overhead compartments or somewhere else so I can put this here? And she was like, no, I'm not moving it for you. And that's when the pilot stood up and he's like, man, you're about to break federal law. Here, buddy, come here and put your drone over here. And like, let me put hmm. it uh, in essentially where the bulkhead was cool. right in front of the front seats. And he saved the day. And it was like... It, it, attitudes can ruin an experience and in today's aviation industry I mean this is why Southwest is so good because they always provide the same experience it's consistent it's comfortable you know what's happening yeah um, but I have to say I really appreciate all the people at Delta who helped me out because there was one mad B leave it at that uh, who almost <laughs> uh, who almost like I almost had to leave the plane because it was like honey this is as simple as you move your bag over here, and then I'm going to put this battery case right here. It's a difficult one, I know, but hey, I mean, like, I don't like to, I, I didn't actually do that. I'm not doing that for the show, yeah, but I, I know, of course. Well, <laughs> Trust me, I, I wanted to. <laughs> you're, you're always going to run into people like that, and, and there are ways to handle that yeah. graciously. And Yeah, but the but as I've been flying more and more and more, I've just realized, like, the benefit to flying Southwest because they don't use regional jets. And in fact, I actually want to do an article about this for drone pilots, so why yeah. drone pilots shouldn't fly on regional jets. Hmm. 
Anyway, well, I should start, That's a good one. start writing that down right That's now. Right. <laughs> anyway. Put it on the list. Put it on the list. Go do it right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else about uh, batteries do you want to share? Is there anything else? Um, Probably a lot more that we really don't have time to go into on here. But um, I think we've done a pretty good job. So make sure when you're storing your batteries, you're storing them at 30 to 60%. Set your self-discharge to seven days or f- make a point to fly every week. Every 10 flights, make sure you deep cycle your battery. And when it's really hot outside, don't charge your batteries when the batteries are too hot. Oh, you know what? Uh, let's share I, one more story. Uh, you know Tyson Clayton. Mm-hmm. I can't, actually, since I'm going to Vegas, I should I should hit him up and say what's what's going on, butta. But uh, maybe do some surfing. Um, but anyway, he left. Sorry, buddy. He left batteries in the mm. back of his pickup truck. Yeah, I've seen the pictures. And it burned a hole through the pickup truck. Yeah. And no, it was not an F-150 with an aluminum bed. It was a steel bed. Yeah. And it's just, that, that's the story I tell all the time when, um, like, I go out on these boats and they get really hot. I, like, literally in the flight over water class have, like, a system for how to keep everything cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and someone told me, like, uh, oh, they wanted me to go in their truck to go to the lake. And I was like, yeah, I won't do that. And he's like, oh, you don't want to ride with me, dude? Like, what's, a, what's that about? And I'm like, <laughs> it's nothing about you. Um, I can't put my cases in the back of your truck because it's going to burn a hole through it. And if I do that and it hits the gas tank, well, now we got real problems. Mm, Yeah, that'd be bad. Yeah. So I'm not a fan. And that's another reason why I didn't buy a pickup truck. I bought the Expedition instead. And that was actually one of the considerations. Hmm. So Always thinking. You have to be in this industry. (laughs) That's right. You do. (laughs) Anyway, guys, I hope that helps. Um, GPC has battery cases for the Inspire 2, Phantom 4, Inspire 1, uh, M100, and uh, M600 batteries. Highly, highly, highly recommend getting those. Um, In a a really cool backpack case for the Mavic plus batteries plus Osmo, right? Speaking of where to put batteries, that's a really cool case. It is a really cool case. Um, I love that thing. I Actually, did you see the backpack review that we did on YouTube? I did. Of course I saw it. I thought that was pretty cool. And it was funny too. Even you said, yeah, how could I forget? Even you said like, it makes you feel like you're there in the jungle, but like. (laughs) Oh yeah. Some of the footage though. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly wanted to be there. Yeah. Well, hey, let's go. Let's do it. So anyway, all right, guys, that is going to do it for us today. Please give our show a like and a review or maybe share it with another drone pilot who could use this useful information to continue making our industry safe and responsible. It's up to you guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support. And I'll see you guys at Inner Drone. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone You. (laughs) 